I had a request to talk about how to read a site API for accessing the site's data. So I'm going to spend a bit of time in this tutorial talking about that since it is an important part of many things we do in JavaScript, especially when we are working with other sites data. Before we get started, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe and remember the discount links to all my courses in the description. Also, my website has a list of all the tutorials I've published. There are over 200 now. The description also has a link to Patreon if you'd like to support this channel and get access to the code files. There's also a link to earn script. Now, first, before I get into this tutorial, whenever you are working with a site's API in JavaScript, you need to be familiar with the fetch command and with JSON. If these concepts are new, I will link to a tutorial in the description. Frequently now we have requirements to interface with another site and retrieve data from that site for a project we may be working on. Generally, every site has documentation about how to use the API they have provided. The API is how we interface with that data, the data that they've provided. Today, most any API provided will use a RESTful design. Now, I'm not going to get into RESTful design, but basically for our purposes, this means the data can be accessed using a URL. And basically, that is what we need in order to use the fetch command to retrieve that data. Though every site documentation can be different, I'm going to look at a few that I've worked with recently and some of the similarities and some of the things you want to look for when you're looking at a site. So let's get started. Now, the first one I'm going to look at, meaning the documentation for their API is Active Campaign. This happens to be a CRM. This is one that I've been working on recently. I needed to do some things with, and so I was completely unfamiliar with it, but I went to their API documentation. I just Googled Active Campaign API documentation and found the URL. And so some of the things you want to look at first is overview. You want to get an overview of what they're doing with their API. And most of the overviews are the same. It's basically telling you that it's RESTful. You can make an HTTP request. Uh, the data is returned as JSON. It's telling you stuff like that. And in most cases, the documentation will give you a base URL. This is the URL, the base URL that you're going to be used to retrieving information. Now, before you go any farther, you should look at the authentication. Every site usually will have some form of authentication that you need to do. And this is usually done with an API token, which you need to have an account with them in order to get that token. But that will give you access to the data that they provide through their API. So overview and authentication is important. Once you've got that information, then you can start looking at the type of data that you're able to get from the API. So if I were to look at this site and I scroll down here and say I wanted to retrieve contacts, as I click on contacts, there are a bunch of different examples. Say I wanted to retrieve a contact. Now, usually most site APIs give you examples of how to do that. And these examples can be found in a number of different languages. JavaScript is usually provided, but not always. It may not be there. So you may just have to take the URL and then work from that point. And basically, that's usually what I'm looking for when I'm looking for an example is what is the URL that is going to allow me to access the data? So right here is the base URL. And then it gives me the additional information that I need to add to that URL in order to get contacts, in order to get a contact of a specific ID in this case. Now, that's not usually all I need. I also need to take into account the authentication information that I've already read. And that's going to be a part of, in this case, the header. Sometimes it's just a query string that we add on the end of the URL. And those are usually the easiest if I can just add a query string there, but sometimes they want that information in the header. And so you need to be familiar with how to use fetch 
and how to put that information in. But there's always examples of how to grab the data you're after. And so that's what you want to look for. All right, let me look at another site. This is JotForm. This is another one I've worked with recently just to show you that there's similarities between these. So there is an overview that just talks about what can be done with their API and then getting started. And here it tells you how to get your API key because you're going to need that to authenticate. There's an authentication section like I mentioned. And it gives you information about authenticating. Now, there are examples. Once again, if I wanted to get a user, I could jump down to the user portion here and it gives me an example of that URL. Now, let me mention something here about this example. You'll probably see a lot of examples in curl. Now what is curl? Well this is just a command that is available in Linux and so a lot of times these sites will use that as the base example. Now if you're running Linux you probably use curl. If you're running on a Mac or Windows you may not but they should be available. Windows 10 has it, uh, the latest versions of Mac have it pre-installed. So you could pull up the terminal or the command prompt and you could use curl to just test it out if you wanted to. But usually, like I said, there'll be examples in JavaScript. And on this particular site, if I come up here, I can switch from curl to JavaScript and I can get an example that gives me information in JavaScript. This particular site doesn't give great examples because it's using uh, a JavaScript library that they've created and so you would have to use the JavaScript library. It's not showing you a fetch command but sometimes they'll show you a fetch command or something like that. Now another thing to look at in these sites is they may have libraries or SDKs that you can access and so if I click on that link and I was doing a lot of work with this particular site I may want to download one of their libraries to make things easier. If you do that, you're going to have to look at the documentation for that and get into that a lot more detail. All right. Now, usually after I've done this, I've looked at this information, the next thing I will do is I will try to retrieve some data to see if I'm getting that data correctly. And so for that purpose, I'm going to switch to a different site. This is called the Star Wars API. This is just kind of a fun site. And the reason I'm going with this site is because it doesn't require authentication. It doesn't require me to have an API key. And I don't want to reveal any API keys for any of these other sites. So I'm just going to use this one as an example. So let's say that I wanted to try out this site. And once again, this has documentation as well. This is the intro site, but I can click on the documentation link and it has documentation about the API. And it just gives some information about how to get started. It gives you what the base URL is. And then you can get examples of the types of data you can retrieve about Star Wars movies. That's basically what this is. So like I said, usually the next thing I will do is I'll try an example. So just to give you an example of curl, I don't usually use this, but I just wanted to show you just in case you're wondering what this is, then I'll do a JavaScript example. But let's say I wanted to use the base URL here and get some of the access points for swappy.dev. That's the URL right there if you want to go to this site and try it out yourself. Swappy.dev is the URL. Here's the API, the base URL for the API. When I press return, it brings me back information. Basically, if I want to get people from Star Wars, this is a URL I'd use. If I want to get planets, films, and so on. So that's using curl, which I said I don't normally use. Usually what I'll use is I'll do a JavaScript command or I'll use Postman. If some of you have used Postman and working with APIs before, that's a great tool as well. But let me just look at a JavaScript command. So if I wanted to see if things were going to work and I just want to test things really quick and see if I can get the data I want then I might do something like uh, opening up the console here 
and just make that a little bit larger. Then I'll do a fetch command. I'll set the results to a variable, something like that. Now, a fetch command returns a promise. So what this variable is going to contain is a promise. But by doing this quick command, I can see if I'm able to get the data that I want. I didn't get an error there. But if I get an error, then I know there's something wrong with my fetch command. Maybe the authentication is wrong or something like that. Well, now that I have the variable here, I can take a look at that promise. The promise is not going to give me a whole lot of information, but I can see it's a promise and I can see that it's fulfilled. And so I can then work further on that promise using the then method. Once again, this is all fetch stuff. Or if you want to more learn more about promises, I cover this kind of stuff in a lot of detail in my asynchronous JavaScript course. But basically, I'm going to use a then method and then pass in a function. But let me first, let me set that to a variable over here so we get the results in a variable. So results.then, and I'm going to pass in a function. Basically, I'm just going to process the data that is returned with the JSON method. I'm going to place that into, into data here. Now, this will also return a promise. But the response data will now be in a format we can see. So if I take a look at data and I open up that promise, we can see that in the promise results, there's an object. And here's the people that I retrieved, Luke Skywalker, C3PO, and so on. Or since that data is also a promise, I could use another then method to do something like display it to the console or something else like that. And there's the people in the Star Wars movie. So basically a little bit of an overview of how to work with site APIs, how to determine the information that you need, how to determine what the authentication is, and then to do a little test to make sure you're going to be able to get that data. So hopefully that was helpful. All right, please hit the like button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses in the description, especially if you want to get into the asynchronous JavaScript course. I'll include a discount link on my website. Basically, in the description, you go to my website and get the discount link there. Also, click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I try to release a new tutorial each week. And once again, thanks for watching.